Now going back to Ghana, where a whole lot is happening concerning the economy of the West African nation. Park Kwesi Shandov, a writer and journalist, uh, join news, joins me for an update on the situation. Good to see you and thanks for your time. Well, the Ghana Union of Traders Association says that they are frustrated over poor economic management by the government. Now, what do you make of their concerns? All right, uh, thanks for uh, crossing over. Uh, regarding the concerns of the aggrieved uh, traders, I would want to state and honestly that uh, indeed their concerns are legitimate because as of now, the economic situation of Ghana is not a very pleasant one. The, the local currency keeps depreciating against the US dollar and inflation keeps rising. Every now and then, it's a, it's a, it's a different story. So. Uh, from a very objective point of view, I would just sympathize with the uh, uh, traders and uh, maybe I want to say that their action uh, is indeed a relevant one because it would, of course, uh, as it were, uh, draw the attention of governments to respond immediately to their uh, turbulence and the, the, fly, the flights that uh, they are experiencing. You know, economists in your country say the country has witnessed inflation at a historic high of 37% uh, in September. Uh, please help us, if you will, make sense of the events that led to this very disturbing figure. Uh, well, so um, the inflation, the, the rate of inflation in Ghana is, is largely uh, a, a result of the depreciation of the city because because, of course, here in Ghana, we do import a lot. I mean, import uh, forms the cracks, or let me say, the, the, the base of our consumption. And for the fact that the, the city is continuously depreciating, it is having a consequential effect on, you know, um, the inflation. In the latest computation that was done by the Ghana Statistical Service, some of the elements that were implicated as, as the contributing factors to the hike in inflation were transportation and fuel costs, for example. And all of these things, if you look at them cumulatively, they have a certain kind of connection with the depreciation of the city. So it's basically the fall of the city that is uh, really making situations very, very uh, tough in, in Ghana. Now, regarding the computation of the country's inflation rates, of course, uh, some experts have actually disagreed with the method uh, currently being employed by the Ghana Statistical Service. They feel that that method actually does not tell the full story and that if a more accurate mechanism were to be used, uh, the rates that we have, 37, may even be more. But largely, it's a rather worrying situation uh, here in the West African continent, Ghana. Country. Well, talking about West African countries, specifically Ghana, uh, is also battling the economic fallout from the Russian-Ukraine war. Uh, how, how bad is the impact of the war on the cost of living in your country? For this particular uh, narrative, it's one that I do not readily subscribe to. I don't buy into the assertion that the Russian-Ukraine war has had any adverse impact on the country's economy. Now, why do I hold this perspective? It's because prior to the, uh, uh, the, the onslaught of the, of, the, of the war, I mean, things were already problematic. So it, it, is, it, is, it is really uh, unfair for anybody to, you know, attribute the crisis to uh, uh, the, the turbulence, I mean, the war between Russia and Ukraine. Indeed, it is impacting it significantly, but it is not only Ghana that has been affected anyway. It's not only Ghana. I mean, neighboring countries, Benin, Togo, they are not suffering the same uh, pinch. So we cannot... Uh, I mean, I don't buy into the conversation that says that, well, uh, Ghana's economic crisis is due to the war. Of course, to an extent, but a very minimal extent for that matter. What principally is stimulating or, or triggering our, our fall and our challenges is, is domestic issues, issues of misgovernance, issues of uh, corruption, and then, of course, uh, issues of government's pension for excessive borrowing. The current... Uh, regime, for example, statistically has borrowed more than any other uh, administration, for example, in the Fourth Republic. And the debts, too, have not been um, serviced as of now. These are the main issues. Issues like COVID-19 and 
the Russia-Ukraine war, they are externalities, and I do not think that they contribute any meaningfully to the current and the prevailing economic woes in the country. Now, Chrissy Shandoff, many thanks for speaking with us. It's a pleasure.